maybe don't think perch fishing is fun, but holy mackerel. Oh my. So Thor and I decided to, you know what? We've done shows on Devil's Lake, done perch fishing, we've done walleye fishing. There's so many different areas to explore on Devil's Lake, whether it's the main lake or the northern lakes. Uh, there's Mike, Alice, Chain, uh, Irvin, that kind of stuff. But we set out to just show you, to hopefully show you what this lake can do. and. Honestly, like I gotta show you this because we we've been jumping around a little bit And here's what we got right away one spot. That's the cool thing about Devil's Lake is the fact that you can get your walleyes And you can get jumbo perch and uh, <laughs> Devil's Lake is a special place. So I'm hoping over the next few days We're gonna come out here be out here for a few days jump around the snow bear and houses different areas of the lake uh, and just show you what Devil's Lake is capable of and I think that's a heck of a good start so here we go. God, there is some jumbo perch down there. Got him. The coolest thing about these perch is they're hot and they're heavy. When you get on them, there's another great perch. When you get on them, there's a bunch of them down there and right now it's a Christmas tree and that's what you're looking for and what we're fishing here is old shorelines so Devil's Lake's got a few old shorelines and you hear people talk about it all the time and there's a lot of people that are always like well what do you mean old shorelines right now we're in 20 feet of water fishing right off the break of an old shoreline and just using a little tungsten with a little feather on it and it seems to be really triggering these fish. We've got a pretty good school of fish that we're sitting on here. And now that's not the, always the case. A lot of times when you're perch fishing, you gotta move and get on them, pluck four or five out of them, get on them again, try to try to follow them. And uh, that's what we're kind of doing here. Uh, we've moved a couple times to find this school of fish, um, but like we're on them right now. Thor's fishing in the back. He just caught a walleye which is a bonus fish when you're fishing perch midday. A lot of times how we set up is walleyes in the morning and the evening, perch during the middle of the day, you get those bonus pike, you get some white bass. Uh, that's, that is why people travel so far to come to a place like Devil's Lake is because it's got everything. It's got trophy perch. You have a chance at a trophy walleye. It's got giant pike in here. Hopefully we can catch a few of those. It's got white bass. If you decide one day you're out here for three, four days and you want to target something different, it's got the white bass. You've got spearing opportunities. You've got a little bit of everything. So we're going to be out here for a few days showing you guys what Devil's Lake has to offer. Ooh, uh, Christmas tree. Oh, just a Christmas tree perch down there. Come on. Yep, good fish, good, good fish. Oh, I love it when there's just a Christmas tree down there. When a perch has shoulders, you know it's something special. Ooh, 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 ooh. That might be a walleye. Another special. swim amongst these perch and you get a few of these really nice fish like you get these pods of perch and these perfect perfect eater walleyes are amongst these perch I, I just still I can't say it enough one of the my favorite reasons to fish this lake we're just coming off a major cold spell and this is like the second nice day and I always say that first nice day after a cold spell, fish are kind of kind of getting back to their roots and going back to what to what we know as fishermen and uh, kind of getting back to normal. And this is the second day, and in my experience, the second day after a cold spell, the fishing gets good. Walleyes mixed with perch, the best scenario that we could ask for. 
And this is a pretty typical ice fishing walleye here. I would say 17 inches, 16, 17 inches. Uh, just fun fish to catch. There's more down there, so we gotta get back there, but typical Devil's Lake walleye right here through the ice. Uh, when you get on a good, a good pot of fish, that's what we want. Great perch. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So basically, we're out here, like I said, jumping around, finding these pods of perch and picking a few off. Now, I think one of the most important things in perch fishing is your rod selection. And I say that because there's two ways to kind of know what a perch is doing. So the rod I choose for perch fishing. Uh, because I like to see and feel the bite. I'm a very visual person, but I also like to feel that bite. It's this 34 inch noodle rod from 2B. What it gives me is that perfect little bend in the rod so I can see those bites and feel those bites. But it also gives me enough backbone when I catch a walleye, I have the appropriate backbone to fight them. Uh, I always pair when I'm perch fishing with four pound test. That gives me the opportunity if I catch a pike or a walleye to be able to handle that fish without breaking off so easily and have an opportunity to land them. Uh, but that's my setup, four pound and uh, the noodle, 34 inch noodle fast and uh, does the trick. <laughs> Come on. Got him. Nine incher. There we go. And this rod just works perfect for perch fishing. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Why is it so exciting? Ooh, another good one. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you have the chance, the weather is everything with perch. We got the sun, we've got a warm up, we've got two days of, of consistent warming up. These perch are acting right now like they haven't eaten in years. Ooh. You can see down there, these perch kind of been able to tell the bigger ones, the bigger ones are sitting at the bottom right now. I'm trying to drag them up. That one kind of coming. There we go, now we got them to move. Come on, there he's moving. Ooh, come on, buddy. Just keeping, I, I drop below the school perch and kind of try to draw the bigger ones out because anytime you're perch fishing, a lot of times you'll have to mess with smaller ones as well and draw those bigger ones out. You can see Thor's got a couple big ones really engaged with what he's doing right over there. It's almost like they want you to stall it out before mm -hmm. they bite it. Bring them up and then once they commit it, just stop and stay still. You can see what I'm using here. Just a uh, number five tungsten. I always put three waxies on and basically that's so when it's down there and you're wiggling it that you get a lot of movement. Also with this many fish, it you, they hit it, you miss. More than likely you're still gonna have a little bait on there to keep them engaged and feeding. So also another really good tactic if we were outside the snow bear, um, really good tactic is to, like what we're doing here, we're actually fishing really close to each other and just keeps the pod engaged as much as possible. You hear us talk about that with crappies and perch and bluegills, like keeping that pod of fish engaged is really important. It, it can make the difference between moving 15 times or five to six times in a day. And even like this, this pod that we're on right now is, is active enough for a guy to help pick out some of the bigger fish a guy might go to a smaller spoon, just a little bit bigger presentation, maybe weed out some of those smaller ones, but I hate to change what's working right now. There, drop it to the bottom and he whacked it off the bottom. I did it! I'm catching one. <laughs> it's a little, it's a medium? Does that count as medium or is that still small? Medium.
There we go. Good one. Woo. God dang it. I mean, a lot of people maybe don't think perch fishing is fun, but holy mackerel. Oh my. Stand up. <laughs> that is a big aggressive perch. Like changed everything. A giant school came in. Thor caught one. The whole school rushes up and everything that rushed up was bigger. So I reeled up like four or five feet. And look at that. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so Thor caught a fish right at the bottom, which was this. Then I catch this one, a true giant. It's just one of those things where pay attention to what's going on, especially with live imaging nowadays. You can, you can kind of tell and be a little bit picky and choosy. And uh, when there's that many perch down there, you can certainly see the difference in size. Wow, perch fishing has been good so far. <laughs> <laughs> One more look at this beast. Yeah. There it is. Ooh. We're hoping it's a little better. It doesn't feel like it yet, but. Oh, yeah. No. Ah! Wait. Wait. The save. The dork to the save. <laughs> um, so it's a really good perch. And I think switching to that minnow head is helping to eliminate the, the smaller perch to an extent. And that's, uh, that's kind that's of the kind goal, of the goal help us. Let's see. <laughs> Ooh, I have never. I don't even want to say that. Oh my god. What do we got? What do we got? Come here. Okay, that was not a pretty catch. <laughs> but <laughs> it is a pretty fish. It's right in that light. <sighs> That was just a whole different type of mark, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think people make fun of me if I say that's the biggest perch I've ever caught. No. Cause it, that's a beautiful perch. Because I think that is the biggest perch I've ever caught. It's the best way to hold these. See, Mike needs to teach me how to hold fish whenever we go and do stuff. Because I think this is the biggest perch I've ever caught in my life. <laughs> That one's chasing up. That's a big fish. Holy crap. Oh, oh this is a good one. <laughs> All right. People say Devil's Lake. You've heard, I've heard rumors that Devil's Lake doesn't have the big perch anymore. But from the little bit I've fished this year out here on Devil's, it's, uh, it's back, baby. The perch fishing is here and uh, we're fishing, I'm just, the little hint that we're doing is we're fishing old holes, uh, holes that we were fishing seven, eight, nine years ago. We decided we were going to come out here today and fish shallower. We're literally 20 to 22, 25, 27 feet right in there and haven't pushed out deeper. We totally expect to have to push out deeper a little bit later in the day, but we've caught walleye and some great perch. Now we are catching some smaller perch, which is actually nice to see. The plan is working out. Come out here and fish these old shorelines, find these old shoreline structures, no matter where you're at. So basically what's happening guys is these fish are sitting tight to the bottom. So I'm going down and I'm just hitting the bottom a few times and trying to drag these fish up. And there's a stall out point here for these perch right now uh, with for whatever reason. See, I get up to 20 feet and they kind of stall back down. So then I'll drop back down below them and kind of work up, just keep working it up. And they're a little bit in a negative attitude, but not negative enough where I can't get them to bite most of the time. See this one coming up, but look, I mean, I'll stall out right at that 20 foot mark. Let's see what we can do here. He's kind of stalled out on top of it. See, he's just, 
they, once you get them to that, they drop it lower. See that one coming up there? And they're all over it, but they're not committing as fast and furious as they have been. There we go. Just like that. So I'm dropping it down on top of the school, like down and like banging it in the mud once or twice and then slowly bringing it back up. A lot of times people don't realize that these perch will stall out just like that. Uh, remember every day these perch have a different attitude. There's, there's no two days alike. Tomorrow it'll be something totally different. So when you're out here on Devil's Lake, try a little bit of everything. Today I'm banging the bottom underneath that school a lot of times you'll hear people don't drop beneath the school don't drop beneath the school but with perch a lot of times i've found if i bang the bottom and slowly lift it through them you'll catch the attention of two three of them because a lot of times they're swimming in these big schools there'll be 10 of them you know 5 10 15 of them down there so we're only trying to catch the attention of the ones that we that are going to eat so the most aggressive fish in the school will come up and eat that bait just like that until i moved up here and started this is probably the best perch bite you've ever had <laughs> I mean, quality is not consistent, but oops, another good one. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody makes fun of me for my laugh when I catch a fish, but it is like the most, the most sincere laugh ever because when you love fishing and catching fish as much as I do, every fish makes you giggle like that. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like waterfall hunting, like. You come out, you see them, and they may not commit to your decoys, but when they do, there's a lot of hooting and hollering. So we are sitting on a Christmas tree. That's what we're sitting on. I don't know, I don't know what, how we found this, but this is Christmas tree right here. Got him. Oh my gosh, they just, it's not a lot of times, it's just they're crazy when they when you catch one, the whole school goes nuts. Bug, sub zeros. Catching a big fish. Walleye. That's why it looks so big. Got him. That looked a lot bigger than I think he is. Ooh, he's got a little fight to her. Come on now, quit rubbing it in. <laughs> this, just so you guys understand, this does not happen every single time you come out. Like, this is one of those things when a plan comes together. Like, I, it's, we've had to move, we've had to adjust and follow the school a little bit, but not even as much as normal. Um, but I, I always do say that the shallower you can find perch, the more they're willing to commit and, and be active. And we're just sitting right on this 22, 23, 24 foot ledge and kind of jumping as they as they leave and we have 20 minutes of, of no perch, move 100 yards, and uh, it seems like we can pick a couple more off. Uh, but you just gotta keep moving, stay on them. Uh, I don't know how many perch we've caught this morning, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's been an absolute, I mean, we're looking, I guess it's not morning anymore, it's 1.15 already. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's been, pretty steady uh the wind is blowing 40 miles an hour out there it's a beautiful day as far as air temperature but the wind is blowing dramatically and the other thing i can say is laugh at me if you want but wind driven shorelines on ice while ice fishing is a is a, is a thing it's a real thing just like it would be when when you're open water fishing so keep that in mind uh and maybe it's just some kind of thing for me I don't really understand it with the ice I don't have a good way of, of telling you why I think fish are doing that whether it's the pressures or what but wind driven shorelines count when ice fishing just remember that you got one just 
all over you. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I pick it up, it dips. I mean, we have enough perch to make a perch episode already. Yeah. One little perch and one better perch. There we go. Ooh, that's a good one. What do you think, sweetheart? Are you just the best fishing dog in all the world? Are you? Yes. I've missed 15 fish. Yeah. You know, because they're... It, it's not that I'm not getting bites. I'm not getting hooked up. Right. Basically what we're doing now is we're kind of transitioning from that midday during the day perch bite out to a walleye bite that's pretty typical Devil's Lake morning and night time. Uh, but we're kind of fishing spot on the spot type thing. So we're looking for rocks. We want to fish just off the edge of the rocks. So when those walleyes are coming in to feed right at dark, we're set up and ready for them. I usually like to transition to the walleyes about an hour to an hour and a half before dark seems like that 30 minutes before dark and 30 minutes after dark is kind of the prime time sometimes it lasts longer sometimes it starts earlier so i figure if i'm there an hour hour and a half but we're we're just trying to get set up exactly where we want to be and gave giving ourselves enough time to do that so hopefully the night bite pans out and we'll see I do gotta say that this auger is by far the most convenient in a in a tight area like this you know snow bears have a lot of room but when you're getting set up and everything like that you want to pack it away so you got a lot of fishing room and with that disconnect like that we put it away all right well that concludes the first leg of what we're going to call our devil's lake grand slam so we got perch in the bucket we had a great day of fishing uh, we, I think we really showcased what Devil's Lake is all about as far as perch fishing. Now tomorrow, well, tonight we're going to run back, get back to the camper, regroup, and kind of try to figure out what's next. Are we going to go after white bass? Are we going to go after pike? After walleye? Um, yeah, we'll see. We haven't really decided what we're going to do in what order. We might try to get a couple of them. But uh, this concludes the first leg of the trip. Perch, check.